Okay, if I can continue with you, Mr. Kostanyan, the situation in South Caucasus changed dramatically in September. Nagorny Karabakh came under the control of Azerbaijan as a result of a military operation, and the unrecognized Nagorny Karabakh Republic declared its self dissolution by the end of the year. You said that uh, 100,000 of uh, Armenians were pushed to leave their homeland in dramatic conditions and move to Armenia, and some person from the leadership of Nagorny Karabakh were arrested and Russian peacekeepers as were deployed uh, in Karabakh and on the Armenian Azerbaijan border was uh, remained uh, helpless uh, as uh, international community. What's the situation today in Nagorny Karabakh? What's the future scenario? What are prospects for a settlement? Is a peace agreement possible? Because Nikol Pashinyan said many times that uh, he hoped to have the peace settlement before the end of the year, and unfortunately it was not possible in Granada because uh, uh, the uh, other counterpart uh, didn't come to this, uh, to this meeting. Or there is another scenario of a further escalation, further aggression this time of uh, the sovereign territory of uh, Armenia, uh, especially around so-called Zangizur corridor uh, that uh, pass by uh, Sunik province. What for you uh, the, the future scenario, the most probable scenario? Thank you, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, Armenia was and remains interested uh, in establishing good neighborly relations with our neighbors, not only with Azerbaijan, but also with Turkey with whom we have, with both of them, we don't have diplomatic relations, we have closed borders. And for a landlocked country as in Armenia, it is very difficult economically as well to have a situation that we are currently now. But, uh, and also taking into account the fact that the security, global security ar architecture and in particular European security architecture is deteriorated. We understand the very necessity to normalize the relations with our neighbors. We are not going to move anywhere from, our, from this region and we're going to have the same neighbors. So the political will of the government of Armenia and Prime Minister of uh, Armenia remains to normalize relations uh, with Azerbaijan. And we do believe that the principles which were indicated in the Granada statement, uh, which are the following. It is uh, the full respect to sovereignty and territory, uh, territorial integrity of both states, meaning Armenia and Azerbaijan, the clear understanding of a borderline that we have, uh, taking into account the Almaty Declaration, which was signed back in 1991, and according to which the administrative borders of former uh, Soviet republics become interstate borders. And uh, third, uh, this is to organize the opening of all communications in our region based on the respect of sovereignty and jurisdiction of the states which we are passing through and on the principles of equality and reciprocity. And in this regard, to somehow shape this idea on opening of the communications, Prime Minister just a few days ago uh, presented the vision that we have, which is called uh, the Crossroads for Peace. Uh, the so-called Zangezur Corridor, which uh, that you are mentioning, uh, first uh, I would kindly ask not to use the term because in its sense mm. it contains in extraterritorial claims. I yeah, ask no, uh, no, that you, you don't use this term yet. Uh, towards Republic of Armenia. And if uh, 
our neighbors are really sincere when they say that they don't have any extraterritorial claims when it comes to both uh, opening of communications. When we see that the peace, uh, crossroad of peace is a doable and realistic project, which is uh, which can bring benefits to all uh, the states in our region on the one hand. On the other hand, the economic ties, the logistics ties can secure the lasting peace in our region. And coming to the issue of uh, people of Nagorno-Karabakh, as I already mentioned, we uh, had the forced displacement uh, of these people from their very homeland, where they were indigenous people living. And unfortunately, regardless of the calls uh, that Armenia was uh, raising and alarming the international community since December when the Lachin Corridor uh, closed, that this is a planned action of ethnic cleansing uh, of Nagorno-Karabakh, uh, international community, and especially UN Security Council, where, where four sessions were organized, uh, didn't adequately react to the situation. And we have the fact of ethnic cleansing, and probably everyone, each of us, had its share of guilt when it comes to the fortune of his people. Uh, but I do believe that uh, there is still a chance uh, that uh, all the rights of his people, including the right to return, can be addressed. Uh, but this means and this requires a bit more effort from international community, because without a joint effort, uh, in general, the protection of rights and the protection of UN Charter is, is not possible. Thank you very much. Of course, it was the question for Armenia, but maybe uh, you can explain the official position of Kazakhstan on this uh, war, on this conflict. Yeah. Thank you. Well, we uh, naturally uh, hope that uh, um, Armenia and Azerbaijan can advance in the uh, peace negotiations and that they can conclude the peace agreement uh, in good faith. Um, and I would pick up on something my colleague just said uh, about the unlocking of communications in the region. Uh, this will not only benefit Armenia, this will benefit uh, a much, much wider region, uh, meaning Central Asia and Europe, because, of course, we are eagerly all of us are now working on the development of the so-called middle corridor and of course the stability of South Caucasus, the unlocking of uh, communication lines in South Caucasus will benefit so many players um, and it's, it has so many, so much repercussions way beyond South Caucasus. So that's why we are praying, hoping for uh, the two parties to achieve uh, uh, a peace treaty settlement, of course respecting territorial integrity of both states. Thank you very much. If, if, I, if I may. Okay. Um, I guess this is, uh, that was very important to touch on the issues of opening of the communications. And um, here, uh, Armenia wants to be understood by our colleagues that we are not an obstacle uh, for connecting Europe and Central Asia and Far Asia and connecting north, uh, north to south, connecting uh, to GCC countries, for example. We are the ones who are interested in it. But to have uh, lasting, pragmatic and realistic solutions, we need, uh, we should adhere to these four principles, which uh, I just um, mentioned. This is Sovereignty, jurisdiction, equality, and reciprocity. And understand the saying all of this, we clearly understand that in order to be competitive, 
uh, on logistic chains, we need to do simplifications. And we are ready to simplify uh, the processes in order to attract uh, more cargo, more vehicles, more people flow through uh, the sovereign territory of Armenia. And I do believe uh, that uh, all our partners, also Central Asian partners, should have their role uh, on uh, convincing or bringing to the idea that these are the principles uh, which can make the project really uh, attractive uh, and lasting. I, I wasn't in any way implying that Armenia stands in the way. I was saying that the peace agreement, peace treaty, and the, uh, generally the establishment of the atmosphere of peace and cooperation will benefit not just yourselves, but us and Europe. And we believe that the opening of communication should be an important part of a uh, possible peace treaty with Azerbaijan. On the one hand, on the other hand, we are interested to open uh, the land border with Turkey mm -hmm. and to re-establish uh, also railway communication that we had during the Soviet period. Yeah, but in all respect of your sovereignty, of your territorial sure. integrity, of course.